Hey everybody, it's David R. Becker here with Becker Art, and today I was supposed to be in Tampa giving you a um, demonstration for the Tampa Regional Artist, but um, due to COVID, we had to cancel that about two weeks ago. Actually, yeah, two or two or a week ago, we had to cancel that. But I'd already drawn up this image, and I thought, you know what? Let's just uh, let's just do this thing, anyways. I'm not sure if there's anybody here <laughs> listening to this, but I figure I'd just do it. Um, at last minute, I just thought, hey, you know what? Let me just um, go ahead and paint this thing, and then you can see it afterwards, anyways. But let me just talk a little bit about Dillman's and the Tampa Regional um, Tampa Regional Artists. They were going to have um, a, a Dillman's Fest. Dillman's has constantly done these beautiful, wonderful fests that where they, they bring in artists, some of their instructors, and we go around the country, actually not around the country, but in Florida and in Illinois and sometimes up in Wisconsin, we do these uh, little demonstrations. A lot of teachers come in and we do our demonstrations. Hasn't been done in the last two years, but um, uh, I just did one in the villages, did one in Marco Island, but actually the Marco Island one got canceled also. And so in... Um, Oh, here we got somebody here. One person here. All right, let's see. Let's see how many we got here. Uh, at least five watching. You know, that's good. You know, they have at least some people watching. And sooner or later, they'll watch it. And, and hopefully, Tampa artists, regional artists, and Dillman's will put it on their website. So, anyways, let me just uh, talk a little bit about Dillman's here. This is the place if you go. I teach up at Dillman's twice a year. And I do that in the spring and in the fall. And um, the dates, I, I forgot, but go on their website at dillmans.com and you can find out all the dates when I'm there. I do a acrylic class and I also do a uh, do another class in the um, fall, which will be the watercolor, I think, this year. I think I switch around every year, but one's a water media, and which is kind of like a watercolor class. And then the Tampa Regional Artist, I've never been there, so I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> I was about to get there, but I just drove home yesterday from Florida, so... Luckily, I got home just in time. They have a nice snowfall um, the last night, so we got three inches. So <laughs> a little bit different change of um, change of scenery. But again, go to um, Dillmans.com to find out anything about all their instructors teaching there. It's a great place to go and get a great um, week's worth, or actually four, three or four days worth of classes. Mine are usually four days, and this year I think I'll go and go back and do some paint parties, and so that's cool. And for the Tampa Regional Artists, if you want to get involved with them, if you're in Tampa, and um, there's the tamparegionalartist.com. All right. Let me just go to um, my tabletop real quick to show you what we're going to be painting. So here's what we're painting today. And I was going to do it on black paper, and then I thought I'd do white paper, black paper, white paper. I'm doing a lot of different um, black and white papers. And so uh, I decided to just go ahead and do this one on white. You know, I just want to show you. And it could be done on black because a lot of this is really dark, and sometimes I like to do that. But um, I, I was going to do that actually at the um, at Tampa. I was going to do two demonstrations, one on black and one on white. But we're just going to do one today, and just because I already had this drawn up, and I might as well paint it, right? And so here, let me just first go to my website. So if you ever want to um, see what's going on in my life, go to my website. Uh, there I teach weekly classes, one in Liberty, one in McHenry. I also do um, workshops around the country. Uh, I just got done with one in Fort Lauderdale, and that was over for the um, Gold Coast Watercolor Guild or Watercolor Society. <laughs> I get them all mixed mixed up. But then I also do, um, let's see, where you do um, every Thursday night we do down here. You see, we do. We just did this one on last Thursday night. We did this class, uh, this um, demonstration, which I do here right on YouTube. You know, you do the same thing. So you, if you're watching along and you have any questions, just put it, put it in the chat over in the sidebar. It will be right here in, the, in your sidebar. Um, put it there and ask me questions, and I'll ask for questions too. And so every Thursday I do a demonstration, and you can follow along or just do it later on because they're all still there on YouTube. All right. And if you want to sign up for my newsletter, you come down here, and this is where my newsletter is. Just put in your name and your email, and you get my newsletter to what we're painting every Thursday. And it's all free. You can just come in. I teach lessons every Thursday night, and uh, those are free online. I just do. I don't. Uh, it's not a Zoom or anything. It is just me um, doing the painting, and you then can do it afterwards. And then you can go to my Facebook page and sign up there um, for my group. All right, and so let's just go to my supplies I'll be using today. 
I use Holbein watercolors. I use um, my Holbein brushes, which you can get on my website. And then also there's a Legion paper is what I use. What I'm using today is 300 pound cold press Legion paper. All right, there's no masking fluid or anything like that in there and there's no tracing paper or transfer paper this I'm using. But I usually have that on my, for my Thursday night. All right, let's go back to our tabletop. And so here we are, and we're gonna do this in watercolor. Um, I also teach acrylic classes. And I will just start, I'm going to start this week, actually Monday, Monday and this rest of this week, we're going to, I'm going to start doing some oils. Oils on Legion just made a new paper that came out that's uh, for oils. And so we're going to try to do a little bit of oil painting, which I used to do a lot of in, in um, college at the American Academy of Art, but we're going to try that. Uh, okay, Claudia, thanks for the, the mass demo was fun and we had a lot of people do that and showed me on my group page and boy, you guys have been doing a great job. For this now, if you look over here, right there you see, there's a lot of really dark darks there. That doesn't mean I'm just going to make this a one color, you know, really dark um, sepia tone like it is, like the photograph. I'm always about making it your own, own colors and your own painting. This is a photograph, I'm not going to trace it to a T. And I, I'm gonna start in my newsletter. I just gonna. I decided that this week, you know, I'm gonna start doing a um, find the find the mistakes in the fixture, and so that's gonna be a whole new, another little thing I'm gonna do in my newsletter. So sign up for my newsletter, and we'll just do a find out what's wrong with this photo, and to make it better and make it a better uh, pho, uh, painting, because we are doing a painting. We're not doing a photograph. I'm not a photorealist, and so photorealism, or I don't paint hyperrealism. I don't paint that way. I don't do everything that you see in a photograph. Um, it's just not my kind of um, painting and not my kind of teaching, but there are a lot of them out there, a lot of teachers out there doing that, and I'm sure there's even a bunch of them at um, Dillman. So take a, check them out, check out their website, and find out what kind of teacher. There's all different kinds of teachers they have up there at Dillman's. And so let's get started here. So this would have been like an hour demo, and so we'll see how long we can, we can take about an hour. So here we got about nine people. Thanks everybody for watching, and just for a <laughs> last minute thing I was just gonna put on. And so thanks for coming, dropping by here and just watching. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the lights. All watercolors, they start out with light to light. And this one, because it is a rainy scene, and if you, if you look up really close, let me just show you really quick, real close. This is a rainy scene. It's actually even raining in this shot. There's a lot of little white, little white things in there that are um, just going to rain, little raindrops on there. Which So I want to make it not so, you know, clear. I want to make it a lot of wet in the wet, which gives me soft edges. So always remember soft edges for wet in the wet. Wet in the wet for soft edges, I should say. <laughs> so let me just wet the whole thing as I go down. And I call this waiting or um, wetting as you go along. I'm using 300 pound. I did mask it off because I always like to have a white edge. It's not on a board though. This is such high, this is such thick paper that I don't even need to put it on a board because it will not wrinkle. I'm just going to go in here and get a little bit of sky color, and I will go with the kind of grays because I do want it to be soft edge, and I do want to look rainy. So soft edges um, hopefully will give me that look of rain. You know, soft edges and mist, and I'm um, just going to make it kind of not so hard edge tight. And I'm going to try to go really kind of looser. And so for the sky, um, I'm just, I don't really usually clean my palette, as you can see here. I have two palettes. I just got this one out of the car because I, I still haven't unloaded my car from getting back yesterday. I just got back from Florida yesterday. And so I didn't even unpack everything yet. So I'm going to go in here with a little bit of um, a grayish blue. So I'm just taking the old colors I have on my palette, which was probably from when I just did the, the mask that um, Claudia was talking about. I just did the mask. Oh, roses in chilly Florida. Not as chilly as it is here. And not as snowy as it just got here. <laughs> and so here we're going to go and put a little bit of gray and have it like looking like it's going downwards and like it's raining. And I'm just going to give it, if you look at the photo, and I didn't make a, um, a value study for this one because it's pretty much a value study as it is. You know, look at that. It's lights, lights and darks. So you can see exactly the lights are in the back. And as it comes forward, it gets darker and darker. I'm going to make it more and more colorful as it comes forward too. And so I'm just taking a little bit of this light blue and I'm just going to bring it down and just bring it down like it's raining. You know, like it just, I'm just going to make it light, but make it rain. Make it just come down. And normally, you know, this is kind of like a little technique where you, 
it doesn't really look like this because rain, you know, it doesn't wash down. Like, unless you see sometimes in the far distance in the clouds, you'll see it coming down. You can actually see lines. But it's not in my photograph here. It's just in the photograph, it's just really light. But I decided I'm going to make it look a little bit more, a little bit more rainy than it is. And the, you, as the artist, should be able to do that. And also, by the way, if you're asking, want to ask some questions, just go ahead and um, on the chat on the sidebar, just put it in there, and I look up every once in a while to see what you guys are, um, what you want to ask, what you're talking about. And so here, I'm putting a little bit of paint in there. And this side is a little bit darker. Um, and my photograph, see, it's a little bit darker over there. So I'm gonna make it a little warmer, maybe not so blue, a little bit more gray. This building over here is really dark. And so, and then remember, this is gonna dry, all dry about 20% lighter. So that looks really dark right now because of the wetness, but it will dry really, really light. And so I started this at noon, so I'll hopefully finish at one. So I keep on looking at my clock, so we'll get, we'll get done. <laughs> And let's see, we're gonna right away just wet this area. And I'm gonna wet some of the street right away too. Cause this will be done. My sky will be done like that. And let me just put some more rain, rain coming down. Now the uh, one reason you should put it on the board is so you can pick up the whole board evenly, like the paper evenly. And you can like let it run down like this type of thing. And it still works like this. See, I can just let it run a certain way. You can go like this direction. You can have things run so it looks more wet like and more rainy like I wanted to kind of just float downwards and I can't put my sheet of paper on an angle either which is sometimes I like to do right now I'm working just flat and I am somebody asked me yesterday if I work um, standing up or sitting down I have a high top kind of um, counter here and so I work on a, a, a bar stool kind of and sometimes I get up you know I get up like this and, I, and sit instead of sitting so it's pretty much higher up but I like to sit sometimes too and but more standing up kind of look, you know, where you're higher up. Now this building back here, I'm going to take my smaller brush. And I'm going to get that with soft edges. And I forgot to take show you how I was going to, because my pencil line got really dark. I was going to roll over with this, but it's too late now because well, I can do it this area. I can just go like this. Just roll over with your or need a rubber eraser to get rid of some of the graphite that is on there to make it a little bit lighter. Especially I could have used that here, but I can probably erase that through the, through the watercolor. But the building back there... I'm going to make it a warm background, cool foreground. Um, that's almost like in winter, when you're doing a winter scene, you do the same thing. You can make the background warm. And so to make this building um, so it doesn't bleed so far, i got to find a color that's warm. Use a lot of pigment. So I'm going to use a little bit of lavender lilac. Mix it in so I have enough pigment so I can go in here. And put a little bit of blue in there too, since I have, I have used blue back there. The rain is kind of blue. Using a little kind of purplish color here, and everybody who is in my class knows how much I love purple. Violets. And I go around this part of the umbrella. And this is wet back here, so you can see I can control it with the amount of pigment I put on my brush. The thicker, the better. Did you bring back some sun star fruit? Uh, no, I didn't get a chance. I, um, I would have. People were saying that I can get it here, so I didn't bring anything back. That was Maria. No, I didn't bring back the um, star fruit that I had. And so I just, um, I, I hopefully get some when I'm here. Because I hear they have it here. So that's good. I'm going to go around here and I'm going to put a little bit of color warmth in there. So the reason I'm putting warmth in the background is um, so that the whole foreground will be like, instead of the, right now, this whole picture is sepia tone. I want to make it warm back and then in the foreground I want to make it really cool and that's going to give the dimension um, it'll be a different kind of dimension because it, usually you do the background gray and just um, light and dull with no, no big colors but you can just still do it warm and oh my god they didn't turn off my <laughs> cell phone <laughs> oh my god hold on no. <laughs> shut up Shut up. <laughs> you want <to> shut up? <laughs> Quiet. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> I everybody in class, we never, I always have to have our little thing up. Oh, well. <laughs> so here we go. If you were here in St. Thomas and the Virgin Islands, you could pick some off the tree. Ooh, cool. Go. So 
we're going in here now and then just getting some of the cool as I go down here I'm getting some of the cool and this this umbrella is going to be darker but I can go right through it um, except for that spot and I actually I'm going to show you how to maybe use a little bit of thicker white and almost like a um, opaque colors of watercolor to um, not gouache per se just watercolor with white in it and so these are my lights again I'm just going with my lights I'm just trying to get the lights in here here and then I'm putting in my warms I'm back here again putting the warms in and this whole thing will be cool cool colors and now usually I work uh, on my Thursday night things I will only work about quarter sheet this is a half sheet so it's gonna be a little bit it's it's gonna be a little bit uh, more to do but I just use bigger brushes and, and I don't make it so so tight that I have to worry about how tight it is and so I'm coming down here and now let's just do our foreground the water and so I'll start with warmth back here and since the bike and the people are gonna be darker I shouldn't even go around them like that I'm not sure why I did that I'll just go right through them go right through there I am keeping this umbrella because it is red I am going to keep it a little bit lighter and I am going around that but over here I don't have to so I'm not sure why I went around these people just go right through them wet it and go right down there get your warmth that you need and I'm putting some red and orange and stuff in there. And then just kind of putting this like this. And I'm going to get the dark darks. Like these are really dark darks. I get them a little bit in a, in a second. First, I've got to get in the big things, or the big areas, and the soft edges. And that could be even hard edged. And um, I don't want to put in too dark because if I put that in this body wheel here will not fix into that. But let me see. Let me just do the street now. And so the street has some white in it. So uh, I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to wet it. I'm going to wet it as I go along. Let this side be a little bit wetter. And so again, um, let me know how many uh, are. Let me know some questions. If you have questions, just let me know. So I'm going to go across this now. See, I'm using the cool colors now. I'm using the cool colors because down here I want cool colors. And that will make anything that's cool then will look like it's in the foreground. And over here is dry paper. So I'm going to do a little bit of um, almost like, what do you call it? Um, scrubbing, scumbling, dry brushing um, to make some texture. And then through here, I'll go and get the cool colors light they're kind of light right through the middle here and it gets darker and then we'll put this on my thing so you can actually see what's happening now while this is drying i'm going to keep this light keep this cool and some people have ask well why do you decide those things why do you decide to go cool in the foreground or warm in the background that's just the thing that you do when you when you start out and you're kind of looking for the values and then also for the color um, the color scheme that you want to use and so the color scheme will basically look like they're orange blue is what I'm kind of going on but being gray it's kind of gray orange and gray blues it's not just bright blues and grays and stuff and so we're just gonna keep it at that in the background and so now I'm gonna go with some these again these are really dark dark so i'm gonna make them warm darks because they're in the back and so that tree back there even though it's probably green i'm not gonna make it green i'm gonna make it a warm a warm color i want it thick because i do want it a little bit darker see these little trees right here and i want a soft edge so i'm gonna go in there with enough pigment to keep it nice and nice and tree leaf like looking like and um i can put a little bit of green in there but I don't want that much of it. I want it more warmth. Maybe some orange in there. And if you look at uh, my Facebook page, you see I, I just done a, a, a. I usually do two paint alongs, one for my class on Thursdays and one for the evening. And I had done the one of the. It was sort of like a <laughs> um, jungle scene, 
and so that jungle scene looked kind of um you did it first did it green and i'm not that's one of my favorite colors so i did it again in more of an orange tint and you can see that on my facebook page in the cover right now to see what i'm talking about when it comes to like how you can use you don't have to use the color of the object that you actually see in the actual photo you can just always go by a color scheme and do your own thing so here i'm going around this umbrella a little bit because it is a little bit darker here this will be darker so i can go right in there my bigger brush and let's see we're gonna do a little bit more violet -y orange back here again for the buildings back there it's a little bit darker and I, i'm not into not um, using gouache you can use gouache i find that i just recently just started using did that demonstration for and some of you may see on my facebook page where i had done a scene a rain scene and i used gouache on it because i felt like it needed it <laughs> And then I'm going to make this pole, which will be darker later. It will be darker later, but I'm just going to give it like the soft edges that it needs right now. And these are actually lines. It's not even a pole. These are lines. I thought that was like telephone poles, but this is just, I'm going to make these all soft edges first. I'll come back in later and then maybe make a little bit harder parts of it. I don't need to do that right now. And again, that's warmer back here. And actually, I gotta make both. So I'm gonna stand up just to get in here, get a little bit higher up here, and I'm just gonna wet it with whatever color I have. And that's starting to dry over here, so I can put a little bit of orange in there and a little bit of cool, so I can add a little bit of both. I find if you make it look like you know the top part is um, warm and it's far back there warm, and then when you come forward, it'll just make this look like it's in shadow and give you a nice composition. It's all about composing your picture really nicely. Don't forget, you can ask questions. No problem. Just ask away. Every, like I said, every Thursday I do the paint along that um, we have. And there you definitely want to ask questions when you're doing that because you're going to be painting it. Hopefully you're going to be painting it. And I try to put across everything I can possibly think of that you're going to ask into the video. And you can get all the videos from past ones I've done. They're all on my YouTube channel. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's always a fun thing to do because then I, then you can tell when I'm doing things like this actually. So now I'm going in here, get some warmth. And now this is drying more and more. But see these like um, f fused edges here? I didn't get that because that's pretty thick and it was almost dry already. So as you're going along, I can just watch it. And I also, from my tabletop for anybody who's never seen, I use a, a towel and I put the towel down, so I don't use many. Uh, I don't use much paper towel. I just go down here on my on my towel, and I just use that as my as how to dry my brush or get some of the water out of my brush. Now we've got a building that goes over here. Goes right to the. I'm gonna go right to the people. Again, if you know your people later on are gonna be darker, go right through them. Don't go around things. Um, this will make it look more rainy if I keep things wet. And actually, I've got the sprayer. I want to kind of keep this wet down here. And so I've got this new sprayer. And it's a mister. It's not a, It's not a, so much a sprayer as it is a mister. And let me just find my... Hold on. Where's my cursor? <laughs> oh, here we are. Let's see. So this is the, this is the sp uh, mister. And if you look, I pump it. And it keeps on spraying a little bit. And so I'm going to just go over this. It's starting to dry a little bit. So I don't want this to dry all the way in. Yeah. So I go over it like this. I go from a distance. I kind of let it go up and down. I kind of go up and down on there. Keeping it wet so that I can get soft edges, right? That's how you get soft edges. And in the back here, I'm getting soft edges because it's in the background. And even though it's warm, and you usually don't use warmth in the background, but I am. So I'm, I'm defe defining the um, law of... <laughs> keeping the background uh, cool and gray and I'm making it warm but that's okay you can do that I like to um, make things my own and just you you should too as a as a, as a student you try to um, get your own kind of look in time and so it's whatever you kind of like to paint um, your style um, the students will definitely probably have a little bit of my style in them which I'm not sure what it is my style 
Here I put a little reflections in the water right away since I got this already here by my brush. I got a cool color in there. And I got a, and here we got a dump bunch of darks through here. And why am I doing this? Because it's still wet down here and I'm going to let that dry so I can get my hard edges in there then. And so I might as well go right in here now and just get some of these hard edges, darks, cool. Again, because I said this is going to be foreground, going to be cool. And then there's a little tire here, and the tire is going to go. And I, in this picture, if you see this picture, the bike is in front of this person. I put the person in front of the bike. I thought he was more important than the bike, so I just decided to put the wheel behind him or her. And you're not going to be able to tell if it's a him or a her because I want it to be, you know, very wet and very loose and so that you can't sometimes tell things like that. So, let's see. Then we get this whole side is a little bit darker. So I'm going to use my big brush, cool colors. I'm just going to bring this down, scumble it a little bit, make it pretty dark. Because this area is actually pretty dark. And it looks like it goes from this bag goes back here and so the building kind of comes in this way and then again the thicker i have it the paint and there's all still water on there the more i can control the edges so i can go still go around here but i don't need to like maybe the bag if the bag was lighter i could go around it but just go right through because i'm going to make him even darker i want to make things a little bit darker i can put a little bit of warmth up here where it's starting to transition and this umbrella is going to be dark black but this one's going to be red i am going to stick with that i'm going to go through here go through them make it look like this is a building and maybe has some windows here i didn't quite get the brightness but when i go with the darkness hopefully that will really come forward then your usually your painting doesn't look like very much until you get towards the end when you put in your darks because your darks are where you get your details darks are details lights are you're deciding on your color scheme so you're deciding on what kind of color scheme you're going to have and you're um, getting all your soft edges. And so you're working a lot on just getting things down, a foundation down with color values, definitely values. And then later on, that's when you go in with the dark darks to create shapes and objects. Objects create shapes like that's a dark right now and that's creating the top of this building. And so that's creating a definite shape. It's an object, you know, so that's always remember that. Your darks create shapes. Your lights don't do that. I mean, there are, there are, this is a shape of a building, but it's not so much that that creates it so much then it is darker than the background. So that's what we have to watch out for. Now, since I don't have any more of that purple anywhere, I got to put that in somewhere. I'm starting to notice that I didn't put that in anywhere else. So I got to put a little bit of that into this area, maybe into the street down here, because it's kind of right here that bleed through and you see how I'm just keeping it nice and light things I'm still keeping them light and I'm going darker and darker as I go along I can even bring this down I, I've learned through using a lot of acrylic paints like in my water media class is to use watercolors don't use enough paint in their brush and enough on it they always feel like it's um, not they're working more of a tint and I think you need to work a little bit thicker still you know you have to still watch out to make it transparent but you can still do it as long as there's water down and you float your pigment it'll still look nice and transparent but you need to have it so that it will stay that value a lot of times if you're not using enough pigment when it, when the water dries up you don't have enough pigment to show the value here we go to the lighter and this bag will be in here this water this bag will be getting a look wet streets wet streets are fun 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 to do i usually do one wet street in my workshops up at dolman's and um all the workshops i do i usually do get in a couple nice um wet street scenes or at least one for sure one and usually i usually get the also i get the bridge the um bridge in prague i always really love that <laughs> i always put that in there everybody's wonders why do you put that in there it's just such a neat bridge Let me know if you have any questions. Tell your um, tell your friends about it. Tell your art clubs about this video. Um, it'll still be up here afterwards, and so that you can still come back and watch it again. 
And I'm making this a little warm because it's going to be next to this um, umbrella, which is red. So I can still make it a little bit warmer on top here. And then as it goes down, I'm going to make it more towards the cool. I'll go more towards the blues and purples. Down here, I'll go with that. And now this is going to be a bike seat. And I have to watch out because I am not going to do much detail. Like I said, I want it to look like it's raining and well, or it had rained and look at these nice little uh, marks right there those little marks i call those um happy accidents right where you're just making those marks and the water marks look great and so that's pretty much all the big big areas now i'm going to start going into my uh, more detailed stuff so i'm going to use my i'm going to get rid of this brush the one one and one quarter inch which i use my brushes you can buy all six of them for, for 60 dollars on my website and that's just a little plug <laughs> But here now we're going to go in with our um, half inch brush. I'm going to start getting my hard edges. Hard edges. I'm just going to work from this side over. I actually should work from this side this way. Let's do that. Let's just work from this way over. And that way um, I get done by the time I get over. And I don't put my hand across it all the time or drop water on it like you see right there. So here it looks like this is a bunch of, it's a bunch of darks inside these wires. These wires are, have all kinds of wires coming all around. I'm going to make the one side of the pole a little bit darker. And I'll kind of know where your um, sun is going to be. And the sun is actually bright right here. It's actually right in there. And that, so I should have made that a little bit warmer right there. So that's that um, when the sun is so bright, it, it kind of optical, what do you call it? Op, um, obscure, or what did you call it? <laughs> I'm trying to think of that class I took um, by Karl Bretzky. He, he has a name for that. So I'm going to go in here and when the sun just brightens so bright, it kind of it dulls and makes a really warm, warm yellow, yellow right here. I'm just going to put that in there. The umbrella will be really bright right there too. I'll just start with yellow and then I'm going to wet it and just let it go in. See how, how thick I make it? So it just bleeds right into the water and then I'm going to use red and this in the image is pretty, pretty light on the inside because it's looking really bright on the inside and so to get that look i'm going to keep it nice and light there and on the top part here do it all together and then maybe i'll come back later and do the dark dark red part of that but over here we're going to make it really brighter a little bit brighter on the side here and so that's pretty bright i'm not going to do the darks yet well maybe a little bit maybe a little bit dark in there to get some soft edges because this side is going to be dark anyway so i'm going to just tip into some violet violet with the red will make a nice um, dark red so i'll just put that i'm just going to play with that a little bit i'll put the dark lines in there later and that means since there's red i'm going to go with red right into the person's face here because it would be reflecting into his face really strongly so i put that right away and then we're going to go right into his body and since it will be really dark you're still going to get the red the red is going to shine on his edge it's just something that happens if it's going through the light is so strong it's going to penetrate through and get on the person himself and then for the really dark of the person i'm going to start out with black and then put color into that too keep the edges keep the edges hard No questions, just enjoying. Uh, keep on enjoying. Uh, hopefully, get it. Let's see what, how much time we have. Oh, we only have half an hour left. Uh oh, we better hurry up here a little bit. Gotta make sure I finish it by an hour. I always finish the painting. Always finish it by an hour. I get that from because I used to be work as an illustrator, a storyboard illustrator, and when it when the storyboard had to be done by a certain time, it had to be done. There was no getting around that because you know the meeting was that at that time, and you had to get it done. Otherwise, you get fired. So. I got to be you know, know how to do that pretty, pretty well, getting work done in a certain amount of time. Now we're going to go in here and just draw a bike pretty quickly. I'm not going to make it really um, super hyper realism. It's going to go in there. There's a lot of things going on in there with a lot of little things. And so I can just fake a lot of this out. And also making things out of focus is a great thing I've been doing lately. I've been trying to teach my students is to, if you don't know where something is uh, on your painting, 
don't feel like you need to explain it. Just blur it. It's like they do that in camera <laughs> with the camera. Just blur it. It'll be a, a lost edge. And I like lost edges so that you don't see everything exactly the way it's going to be. So I'm just losing the edge. As long as it, um, the outline it kind of looks like what the object is, then you're fine. It's going to look like the object. Everybody's going to know this is a person. I mean, if I get it off a little bit here and there, who cares? There's a little lost edge and this tire and stuff. It doesn't, you know it's going to be a bike and I don't know if it's going to make it perfect. And then, oh, this handlebar has some stuff on it. And so I can just push around a little bit. There's probably some wires. Here's the back tire. I'll just bring that into the background. And losing the edges makes you makes you makes your eye not focus on that spot so much. And there's times where you don't want your eye to focus right on a spot. They want you to focus on your center of interest, which is pretty much this whole area right here. This guy is pretty much actually no. This is the center of interest because it's against the lightest light, most color right in that area. And away from that, I'm just going to start getting more and more cool. See, I'm going to go down here and just go from light warm to cool to cool colors. This is all stuff that you learn uh, little by little. I've had a lot of students who have started my classes on Thursday night or my paint alongs um, and who have actually gotten pretty darn good, I must say. There's a few of you guys and they're, you know, reg regimentally or dil diligently go and paint every week of what we're doing. And, and I may tell you, they've been coming really, they've been coming really good. They really work hard. And so I mean, that's really, I'm really proud of them that they're doing it. And I'm so glad that they are using it. So don't be afraid to, you know, ask questions when on Thursdays and, you know, you have to do, you don't have to paint it right then and there. I'm putting little lines a little for the, so I'm just going to lead this away into the distance so you can't see where the tire stops or starts. And I will do some reflections in here, put a little bit of red that's from up here into the street too because that would reflect in there a little bit yeah, put a little red in there a little bit thicker red maybe make it more watery a little bit more orange i think because it's up here it's a little bit more orange so and then i can just keep it wet and that'll be nice and soft so I'm working both all three brushes at once. I'm kind of going in there, and I said I was going to go from this way, but see how uh, how you change automatically. <laughs> you know, you just sometimes you just do what you do. You just if you whatever you feel. If there's no specific way you have to paint. You know, it's sometimes as long as you get the lights down and the big areas down. And when you do the darks, you can put some of the detail in there right away. You don't have to. It's just whatever you feel like. And the thing is to make sure that you get. It, it went into wet and really try to make it look like it's um, floating the pigment. Big important is floating your pigment. Now I'm going to go right in here into this. Um, underneath here seems to be darker. I'm going to go with the dark. It looks like it's almost all dry, so that's good. I'm going to leave the top alone because the top looks like it, it has goes from a little gradation. And what's this look? This goes like this. Goes down. I lost my line here, so I'm just making this up. I will put down here. And those are hard edges. I'll go around the head a little bit. Now, while it's wet, I'm going to throw a little bit of red on this side, like it's reflecting a little bit of that red from that side. And even a black umbrella, it kind of like lights up. Hopefully, it's, well, not really. <laughs> it's pretty um, solid, the umbrella, so you're not going to see very much. And then I'm just going to lose the edge of um, his head. Because do I really need to see his head in there? I, I can see it by um, seeing the shoulder and the collar. I know that the person has a head on top of his head, on the top of his shoulders, I mean. And so you don't, like I said, again, you don't have to explain everything. The mind is pretty, pretty um, knows, knows what's going on. Like you don't have to, as long as you get a nice edge on it. And here I even went a little bit different because um, I got too thick at the drawing. so. I'm changing things as I go along. And that's something you can't do if you're doing hyperrealism because you have to put down exactly what you see in your photo. Otherwise, it's going to look messy and that's not what you want And if you're doing hyperrealism type paintings. This kind of painting, you ha you can be a little sloppier. You can be a little sloppier. And 
Though if you can do the hyperrealism, they're winning some great awards. I mean, they're doing some great paintings and stuff. So I don't, I don't poo poo it. <laughs> I just, it's just something I, I don't, I can't do. I, I don't have the patience for one. And um, there's some great, like I said, there's great artists, and I'm sure they have a few of them at Dillman's if you want to take a class of that type of thing. And here we're going down. We're gonna go to the color of blue then down here, a little blue. And again, from warm, and as I'm going down, I'm getting cooler. And so I'm wetting as I go along. This part's dry now. It's starting to dry a little bit, so I'm just going to go down there. Any questions? Why did you jump away from the wires and work on the lower right? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, the reason was... Um, I think I, because I started with the umbrella, the warmth, and so I figured that was a center of interest. I went in there and got that bright red, so I know that everything from this point here has to be duller and goes away from the warmth, and then it'll go downwards. So um, that's the only reason, because this was dry and I got the red. That's the only reason I did that. Otherwise, I would have maybe just kept going with the wires, but the wires really are very small details, dark details, and so you, usually you do those in the end anyways. I usually always save my dark, dark details for the end. There's the large darks, and then there's the detailed darks, I call it. And so I usually keep the dark details for the end of the painting. And that's things like highlights, dark highlights, um, wires, and little, everything that makes it small. With the user's small brush, wires, especially is one of those things. And so here I'm going in with some blue, some dark blue. Again, putting in blue. And you can start with any color when you do a wash. Like, you notice I just go with anything and then I kind of go in here. I'm going to make the look the leg or the foot. Foot looks like it's up a little bit and then you kind of can't tell where the foot stops and the reflection starts. And that's a good thing. So don't, don't, don't make it. Um, I notice everybody always stops right at the bottom of the foot and then they keep on going. No, just you don't need to know where the bottom of the foot is. You can't tell that in the photograph. So, well, I guess you could if you look really hard. But I try to make it so that it, I can't tell the difference. And then just go ahead and put your reflections in there. That way you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry so much about exactly making a photograph. And this bag right there will be here. And so it's the color of the street down here, which is gray. And so I don't have to really worry about the colors. Um, this is all dark. It's very, very dark. And then we'll put this band right there. His hand. And so those are the people, right? I mean, that's pretty close for the people. And, I, and really, nothing is black. Even though I've used some black, um, people find that they they make their black with um, dark colors. And I kind of do totally opposite. I've been teaching my students to use black first and then add color into your black. I just think it's that much easier. I mean, I was a student. I always mix my blacks with color, and that's hard. I mean, if you make it if you can make it simple, why not? <laughs> why not make it a little simpler on yourself? Start with a black and then put color into it. You can see right here. My, my painting is pretty colorful, and I'm using black. This is black right here, and I just put that in to darken the color. But the, the brightness of these colors, Holbein colors, are so bright that they outweigh the, the amount of pigment that I'm using. It really overtakes what the black is, and it makes it a dark, whatever color I'm using. I'm just going to go in there, and then just, this is, should be lighter. I'm not sure why I just did that. It should be a lighter part, and I should have done the background darker. So let's see, because it's the the bottom underneath there is darker. So let's make this a black with blue. Uh, Maria asks, is it okay to rewet my sky with clear water, and add more color? Absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing nothing sad. Like if I want to go back in there, I can do that. You just have to watch out if you're going the f second time into something. For one, make sure you have clean water, and then you can actually spray it too. You can spray it with this, so you don't mess up like parts that are are light. And also, the kind of paper you're using, like if you're using Yupo and everything's on top, you're gonna mess that up a little bit. But I could take this sprayer, this mister, spray the whole thing and make another wash on top of that, which I may do just to show you. Let me just get this umbrella done real quickly here. Be a little bit lighter than a little bit lighter than underneath here. So you gotta make it a little bit lighter than what's on top. And then I just kind of go and try to get the look. 
I'm gonna try to get the look of the lights and darks and I use enough paint so I can stop the paint from bleeding. Gilly asks if I'm home safe. Yes, I am. I'm painting in my studio, so I made it. Actually, there was no problems yesterday. The top of the left umbrella needs light color. The top of the umbrella needs light color. This one or this one? This one is going to need darker, and this one definitely is going to need some lighter. And I'm going to go in there with, uh, with, with actually white paint, and you'll see that in a little bit. Yes, I do use white paint. Sorry about that, but I do use white paint. <laughs> now it's ready to go into the detail details, the light, de the dark details. And so I'm going to st start out on top here and just start putting in my details of the of this post. So I just get in there and just get cr go crazy with the post itself, make it a little bit darker. Remember I said I was going to do a harder edge on one side. And I'm going to just... I mean, that's a big part of this picture is all those lines. I mean, that's so cool. These lines going down. And I'm not sure how they all stay up there, but um, this picture could be like in Cuba or something or Taiwan or something and where they have all these wires all over the place, all electrical wires and telephone wires and all that. So it's kind of cool. It's, it's part of the whole scene. That's what really makes it cool. Where you ordered a sprayer, cool. Right on top of your left umbrella, is it okay? Yep. Thanks for asking the questions, guys. That's really awesome. I always like to ask your questions. So now I'm gonna stand up because I gotta do these. When you do these lines, it's gotta be a one-shot deal. Don't stop, just go. Just go, go, go. And if you gotta practice on another sheet of paper, that's okay. When, when you start up here, just go down and do it. Don't hesitate. One shot, two shot, because if you stop, it's going to make it look um, not as clean. And so if you need to take another sheet of paper and just practice, do that. Definitely do that. Just one, two, three, four. Now these here are really important. So these are going to just going to, not enough water on that one. And let me just make them a little bit lighter. I don't need them to be that dark. So also figure out what kind of value and then pick the right value. And it's gotta be like a wet brush. And this is the, this is the rigger brush. And you just kind of start and just go two, three, a little more water, four, this one goes five. And then there's some that go way up here. One, I try to go in the pencil line, but if you don't get them, you can always erase those or put them in really light when you first put them in. Some people even like to just do it with a pencil, which is actually, I don't mind that. I don't think that's okay. But um, if you can get it really light with the brush, it really looks um, like a watercolor. Then it just gives you a little bit more. What's, boy, there's all kinds of stuff here, isn't there? There's this line that goes this way. And then just going to put a couple lines this way. And you got the post going that way. There's all kinds of things happening up there. And that's kind of good. You know, just put all that stuff in there. Oh, there's even a line going this way, which is kind of weird, but I'm going to put it in. All right, I know it's, I know we'll put a little dot there and we'll make lines come from there. This whole thing is about these lines. I mean, it's a big part of this picture, so don't be afraid of putting them in. It's, it's kind of important in a way because it's basically shows what this area whatever it is it kind of looks like and so it's one of the reasons i like that picture anyways it was because of those because of those images because of those wires here i'm making it a little bit dirtier um you know, or i mean tighten it up a little bit well that's here this has some maybe maybe the part top of the building and i know it was really and I will, once this is dry, I'm going to show you how I can make it rain on top of there again. That's a good question, actually, that you can go back in. I'm going to show you how to go back in. Over here, I'm going to do a little bit darker parts again, like windows and such on the building itself. A little bit darker. So you get a kind of a look. And going down. And again, you can see how loose I am with it. it does, it's not so important that I get them direct because the whole painting is done like that. Now, if I had one part of the painting really tight, then I couldn't do this. I mean, I have to make it, that has to look like the same, same 
image and the same technique here in the bottom of here this could be a little bit darker in here with my big brush so I don't have to do too much detail I use a big brush when I don't need much detail and I want to just do like do edges and and I'm going to soften my brush or wipe out the brush so there's not so much water in there. And then I'm just going to kind of dry brush it on there. Pull it down here a little bit. And then back here, I'm just going to do a little bit of darkness in there. So I pick up some red from here. Get a little bit of detail. Not too much detail. I'm just kind of figuring it out a little bit here. I'm going to purple kind of bugs me a little bit so I'm gonna go across it with a little bit of red See, I'm kind of messing it up because I don't like too much if I'm gonna go crazy with it then go crazy <laughs> don't don't start getting really tight because it is supposed to look like it's raining and if you tighten tighten things up it doesn't look very rainy if you're making things really tight and where you can see through and see what's going on there. I don't want to see through what's going on there. I want it to be so that I just can kind of tell that there's buildings overall. So, let's see, I think I'm gonna do the spray now and we're actually pretty close to almost, we got 10 minutes left. So let's see what we got here. Oh, the darkening of the umbrella. I gotta do that. So I'm gonna take the little darker colors on the umbrella. And you can see there's a little bit darker in this area. Got the wires and so there's this right here. Goes down to there. Goes a little bit darker right here. And then I'll wet it and I'll let that those bleed into more of a red and I will identify the shape of the umbrella a little bit more. Here a little bit darker on that edge. Maybe a little bit darker on this edge too. And it could be hard edged because I'm in my dark hard edge sta stage right now. I do want it to be darker. And um, I'm keeping the head light, like it, like it's really going through there. So I give him maybe a little bit more definition in his body, like his hair line right there. I'll go there, maybe make it a little bit like some folds because it, it, I can go in there and I can do a little bit of that. It does not, I don't want to have to do a lot of it, but just maybe like a fold here and there, like where the, where it's, his shirt stops and where, um, maybe this is a jacket and has a little, let's see what else. This, this guy's head looks a little bit small. So I'll go in there with some dark, can identify it just a little bit more. Just a little bit, just enough to use the front of his face, make the front of his face a little bit redder. Make his collar, so you can see his collar. I don't really need to see the strap as much. I can see a little bit, I don't need to see it that, that much. Taking solid black here to get some, also you can do some um, folds. And that, if you don't see it, you, you know, I, I know enough, I've been doing enough drawing that I know how the shirt folds and stuff. If you don't, look it up, you know, look up some pictures and see what happens, how to, how can you make it look like it's fold right, like on his arm. And a lot of times they have that little thing underneath the jacket they have, where there's like a little pocket of air that goes up underneath there. Here you're gonna put in like um, the, the pocket of the pants, you know, how it folds. Now, this tires back here is a little bit darker, a little bit less definition. Now the back of this, inside this little thing I want to put inside here, like you're looking inside this little carriage, which I think is what it is, a little carriage. I don't know, this little, they pedal you around with. A little bit darker, put some color in there close to the side. But the rest, I don't want. I don't want much um, detail. So, if you don't want to see detail. You know what to do. Lose the edges. Make it blurry. Now for the final 
I'm going to take and I'm going to spray the sky and make it a little bit darker right now, right on top of this. I know it's scary, but I'm just going to take this sprayer. This is the last thing I'm going to do. Then I'm going to get a little bit more wet and I'm going to, I want things to float down. So it really looks like it's really raining out there. Because right now it's like almost the sun is out. It's almost too bright. So I'm going to take it and again, you spray it so it lands on there nice and evenly. And I'm basically going to spray my... I'm just spraying across it. You can't see it because I'm too far away. I can spray it up and it'll land downwards. And here we go. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to take my big brush, get a gray. I'm going to make a gray with violet and whatever this is, and a little bit of white. And I'm going to go over some of this real lightly because it's wet and it's going to it's going to bleed and it's going to get into some of my lines, but that's okay. I, I wanted to. I wanted to get in there. And so here's a way of making it darker, making it look like it's coming down and it's really raining hard. I know a lot of people would be like, oh my gosh, you're gonna ruin it. No, just, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna look great. Just try it. Always try things when you're practicing and you're trying new things with um, watercolor as a beginner. You know, don't be to um, the point where you're just doing paintings, pretty paintings. Learn from your mistakes and learn from doing things. If you don't do it, you're never gonna be able to learn how to do it. So just get in there and try things. When I'm when I'm teaching, that's what I'm telling my students. It's like you're not here to paint pretty paintings. You're here to learn. And so I make them do things, and um, they usually come out with nice paintings, anyways. But I don't want them to think that you know, everything you do has to be perfect and beautiful. The painting, especially in classes, because I mean you're you're doing something that you never done before, and the way I want you to do it. And so it's not going to be probably the best the first time you do it. I'm going to just see I'm going right through here and wetting it. I wet it. And I'm losing a lot of edges now, which is what I want. I want these edges to be lost. And then when it dries, I can go back in and highlight some of those, um, tighten up some of those lines and stuff. But I kind of like this look. I mean, I like the look of it being very wet and just very bled. And also, by putting darks here, it makes my light shine here a little bit brighter. And that's what I wanted anyway, so... Let's wet this down here a little bit. I think we're almost done, guys. The brick road stays smooth. Um, um, I could put um, things in there, but I will have to wait for them to dry. I could put like um, texture in it when it's dry. Not so when it's wet, because you're going to get smoothness. But yeah, you can do that, definitely. The sprayer is the best. Hobby Lobby. Uh, any other questions? Nope. Yep. So I'm going down here, I will get some, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape it a little bit more here. Try to scrape it and make it textury. You can do that. Best when you dry it to get those things. Just a little darker. This is all wet. You remember I sprayed it, so it's all wet. So it's never going to get a hard edge. And it looks more like it's really raining now. And even when it messes up areas like that, that's great. I want it to smooth things out. Like right here, it looks like it's got a little bit messy here. That's good. I'm glad it got messy because it makes it look like it's really raining and really hard. I'm trying to get create an atmosphere and that's what I'm trying to do. And actually now I notice that I'm, I know this is like really, if you look at the photo, it's really bright. The sun is like reflecting on this thing right here. So it's really bright. But I'm going to put a little bit more of the person reflecting in that area. So I didn't pick up really so much of the light light. So I'm going to take this guy and reflect them into the street a little bit more. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more here and I'm just gonna reflect them down here a little bit more. So there's a little bit more of the reflection more than it is just the light and the wet street. And here I want texture. I wanna get some texture in here. So I'm gonna go with some really dark texture. So the paper's almost dry on this side so I can just take my brush, scrape it across the paper, get like a dry brush look. I think that's about it guys unless you guys got some questions we are done put this um, on top here bring this through the bottom that's the, the pole and then bring it down here a little bit of red All right, guys. Um, so, there any more questions? 
I will take the tape off and tell you again, check out um, Dillman's.com. Take my courses up there. Take my course on Thursday night. If you're in Tampa, check out Tampa Regional Artist. I'm not sure. And their website, they have things that going on with like all the time. I didn't get a chance to see them this year, but hopefully maybe next year I can even maybe hopefully teach there if they um, if they want me. <laughs> I'm always trying to find some places. So if you are actually in Florida in January and you belong to a club and you want me to come down there and teach, let them know and I will talk to them. And um, during the spring and fall, I will be up at Dillman's. All right, let me take the tape off and we'll be done for this one. I really like that. Um, the red and this umbrella is really kind of neat. I really like that. A little bit darker right here. All right. Uh, take the tape off real quickly. It gives me a nice, nice edge. It gives me like a like putting a mat on it by even putting a little bit of a. Um, and I like I said, I didn't use a board, but I, I I like this edge, so I put it on there anyway, just so it gives you a, a little bit of a uh, kind of a matte look to it. All right. Tell your friends, um, I will get this over to the Dillmans and I will get it over to the Tampa Regional Artist and we'll set up and put it online too. But um, since I had, I, again, I had it drawn up and so I figured why not, why not do it? And um, look at that, I even like these lines now, how they got softened and that's so I'll, I'll do a couple here again when it's dry. It's going to be before this is over. Um, I will, or after this is over, I'm going to put a couple hard edge lines in there and it'll be all good. And you can look on my Facebook page where I posted it there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great Sunday. And we maybe we'll see you on Thursday, all right? Bye-bye.